Lassie, what are you doing? Oh, hey, Raj. Nothing much. Just watching the Netflix, that's all. Um, Classy, didn't you have anything planned for today? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Pokemon. To Pokemon. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. I, in fact, in fact, I was working on Pokemon the whole time. I was walking to Walking Dead. In fact, I was watching The Walking Dead to prepare for Pokemon. So to work better on Pokemon, you were watching The Walking Dead. That's the excuse I'm going with, yes. Uh-huh. And pray tell, what game is this? Uh Pokemon Snakewood! Wait, is that a thing? Okay, let me set the record straight. There exists a fusion between Pokemon and zombies, but it isn't official. If it were, that would probably be a 180 so sharp you could cut a Blastoise's shell with it. This is the magical world of fan-made games. ROM hacks. If a game is popular enough, there are most likely 2816 ROM hacks to go with it. And Pokemon games aren't the only ones affected. Legend of Zelda, Mario, Sonic, all of these games have fan-made works to tag along. These can range to all kinds of ideas like ports of retro games, the same game with a much harsher difficulty, and some more... original ideas. And our Pokemon Snakewood is in that last category. So let's get started. Pokemon Snakewood, released in 2013 by Cutlerine. And isn't that box art just, just lovely? This is a ROM hack of the third generation of Pokemon, namely Pokemon Ruby, which apparently is the most popular version of ROM hacks. Most hacks use the Gen 3 basis, which I find a shame because I find Gen 3 to be pretty weak compared to others like 2 or 5. But hey, I don't even know the first step to ROM hacking, so I can't allow myself to be picky on that front. Now, as this is a ROM hack made by one man and one man alone, I'm going to allow myself to be a little more lenient than usual. What about air control? That was made by one man. Yes, but this game doesn't call glitches features and try to sell it to you for money. Carry on. Don't get me wrong, if things are bad, I'm going to tell you they're bad. But for more technical stuff like glitching graphics and all that, I'll let it slide because you tend to expect it from ROM hacks. And people just can't afford glitch testers like AAA companies can. Hell, half the time those guys don't even bother! I'm looking at you, Ubisoft. Who am I kidding? We're all looking at you. So the game starts off with Professor Birch trying to remember what happened. Or is it me who's trying to remember? I don't know, it's never very clear. What is clear, though, is that this Bulbasaur doesn't look very... well. Pokemon don't die, they just faint and lose the will to battle. Uh, yeah, I think Cubone will disagree on that. So after that, we have the choice between a boy and a girl. Typical. The boy looks okay, but the girl just has that smug look on her face, like she's saying, Come at me, bro. I dare you. What can I say? I'm hooked. Now I just need to find a name for you when- <coughs> Okay. Okay. So we have the choice between Ghost, Haunt, Loba, and Jericho. Okay, that's how it. We're going with Jericho. I'm sorry, it just can't be helped. Finally, Jericho awakens in our usual quaint little town. Wow. Could do it a bit of retouching. As luck would have it, everything is destroyed except three distinct Pokeballs lying on the ground. Convenient. Okay, so. Trico, Torchic, or Mudkip. A very important choice indeed. First of all, let's figure out who is who. This Pokemon is spinning on its axis. Okay, let's try this one. This Pokemon has a sense of ill will about it. This Pokemon is emanating toxic fumes. Nope, nope, you lost me. Alright, so get this. As you've probably guessed, these descriptions don't exactly fit Trico, Mudkip, and Torchic. That's because they aren't Trico, Mudkip, and Torchic. It's actually. Baltoy, Coughing, and Paris. What an... interesting choice of starters. Why these three? What's so special about them? Who has ever woken up in the morning and went... Man, Blaziken is boring. I want a Parasect instead. And I... I mean, for Christ's sake, it's already a zombie apocalypse around here. I don't need another zombie running around. So, I go with Coughing because obviously, 
and I name him Toxic Love. Mainly because I want him to have Tim Curry's voice. Following that, I leave this quaint little town and come across a peculiar scene. Uh, you know, I think I forgot something back there. Let me go check. Hmm. No, no, no. Hold on, hold on. Oh well. Did you need me for anything? Oh. Nah, I'm just messing with ya. I help the poor lad and confront the zombie. Or, by the look of things, the poor soul who tried out Willy Wonka's new chewing gum. After defeating his Pokemon, forcing him to crumble into dust. Because logic. Professor Birch explains to us what has happened. The zombie apocalypse has hit the region, and all hell is running loose. Their last hope lies in the Pokemon champion, who also happens to be my brother, and Flora, the professor's daughter. But no one has heard from them in months. It falls onto my shoulders to find where my brother has vanished to, and to figure out what has happened in Hoenn. Now, Pokemon games aren't known for their engaging story. In fact, only one of them had a good story in my opinion. So seeing fan-made Pokemon games dwell more deeply into a good narrative could be a refreshing change. But in this game, the exact opposite happens. There's too much story. This plot thickens so much, you'd swear it was cutting for Super Size Me too. It goes all over the place. You go off to find your brother, but then you meet Blondie here who's apparently summoning all the zombies. Alright, we have the villain. But then you meet this guy with a zombie butler, don't ask me how that happened, who is confronting the source of all the evil, who apparently isn't this girl but the fourth horseman of the apocalypse, famine, pestilence, war and death, but they're under a guy called Lord Grievance, who's trying to capture the Dragon King, who decides he hates all humanity for some reason and goes on his own rampage, plus the zombies, then you have these idiots who's aligned with Walter, who is now a member of a cult and a murderer, when all of the other gym leaders are missing, including your father, then you have these 11 pricks who had nothing to the plot, but show up three times in a row and you have to fight all 11 of them each time! So the evil demon like overlord wants to use the harmonies of death to convince the Dragon King to destroy the world with zombies. Got it. What do I do with this? Yes! Pokemon games could do with more in-depth story, but here, there are just so many different plot threads happening at the same time that you end up mixing them all together into one huge mess, and as a result, you don't care. You don't care for the story, because there's too much story. A Pokemon game where there's too much story, I feel like I'm in an alternate dimension right now. Presentation and gameplay wise, there's nothing to say. Really. It, it's just third gen. You played third gen, then you know what, how it goes. There are a few graphical glitches here and there, but other than that, nothing else. So, what can I talk about really? What can I rant on and on for minutes on end? There's nothing, right? Oh, how cute. You're underestimating me. I can rant. I can rant on this game's stupid design choices. For a start, the starters. I'm sorry I have to go back on this, but these are not interesting or even good starters. In the normal games, they were designed specifically to be more powerful than the average Pokemon, with a more powerful move pool, at least compared to beginning Pokemon. Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Squirtle all learn moves of their respective typings quite early, around the level 10 mark. Coffin learns Sludge, because no one cares about Smog, at level 21. So until I reach level 21, Tackle is Coffin's best move. Tackle. You know, the move nearly every mon knows. How is this supposed to be special? And what's even more aggravating is the fact that every other trainer I come across has one of these data Pokemon with the cool moves. I want that! Why can't I have that? Why am I stuck with a Paris and a Baltoy when they have Charmanders and Bulbasaurs? Oh, sorry. Rotmanders and Boilbasaurs. Is this what it feels like for youngster Joey? To be stuck with crap while everyone else has the good stuff? Man. I feel sorry for the poor kid. Another thing I don't think Cutlerine has quite grasped yet is the notion of a difficulty curve. In most games, it starts off easy and gets harder and harder as the game progresses. The difficulty curve in a good game should look like this. In a Souls game, it should look like this. And in this game, it looks like this. I know, anticlimactic. But it's still too damn hard! Like I said already, everyone has the cool, powerful Pokemon while you're stuck with crap. But on top of that, this game has some of the most random difficulty spikes I have ever seen. You can find trainers whose Pokemon pass the double digits before even seeing the first town. One of the difficulty spikes includes this one demon, where she has a level 13 Murkrow in Viridian Forest. 
Level 13. My starter is barely level 9. And I fought everyone I could. Where the hell did this thing come from? Oh, and it has glare. Okay, I can take a hint. I'm not wanted in this picture. Okay, so now I have a problem. I have no trainers around me, and that Murkrow one-shots my entire team. My only option? Grinding! Yay! And thank God for emulators having speed up buttons, because I kid you not, just to get to the point where I survived this battle with one mon left, I grinded in-game for an hour and a half. 90 minutes of pure grinding. I barely just started the game, and you're forcing me to grind for 90 minutes! Another case in point. After grinding up for nearly two years and beating the damn Banshee, I make my way to the first town, and I come across this. My guess? It was a body I could loot. Never thought I'd say that during Pokemon. So I went to approach it. Turns out, this is a trainer. A trainer. Okay, first of all, you don't fight in cities game. Second of all, what the hell? Why am I fighting a severed head? How the hell is it? What? Uh, yes, hello? I think you skipped a few steps. Like, by the entire staircase. Why the hell am I fighting a Jinx in the town of the first gym? Jinx is way too powerful for the beginning of the game. I mean, look at this. My Pokemon are falling like flies. So now I know not to go near that trolley kit. Only to be stopped by another invisible wall and have an unimportant battle with the zombie girl. After that, I make my way to the- ARE YOU KIDDING ME RIGHT NOW?! HOW MANY INVISIBLE WALLS ARE THERE IN THIS GAME?! THIS IS THE THIRD IN A FEW METERS, GIVE ME SOME LENIENCY GAME! This is so I can have a battle with this guy whose name I completely forgot, and I- OKAY! THIS GAME WANTS ME TO DIE, IT'S JUST A FACT! Level 17? Are you kidding me right now? Why the hell is everyone better than me? I don't have the levels for this, my entire team is dead! I don't even know what the- WHAT? Speed boost. Really? You gave it speed boost? You don't find that at all overkill. <laughs> See what I mean? This entire game is throwing these huge difficulty spikes out of nowhere. It's a complete try and die. You have to die at every single obstacle you come across just so you know it's there. Then you can grind up for three hours and voila. You can move ten feet forward and do the entire thing all over again. And this is nowhere more apparent than in the villain's hideout. I can't even begin to describe how stupid this place is. It is beyond mortal comprehension. I mean, I don't know what's worse. The room full of respawning Pokemon tiles that you have to cross multiple times. The guard's Pokemon that look stupid but are all tanky. The elevator that only works if you have a Magnemite on your team. The teleporter that traps you inside a small square where you are forced to fight a level 100 Pokemon, effectively wiping out your team each and every time with no warning or reason. But by far, by far, this room. This goddamn room. Let me explain how it works. This room is chock full of alarms on the floors. If you step on a tile, you are teleported back to the beginning. It's up to you to find the right path to cross without being teleported. With no clues, no hints, no indication of any kind, you have to guess your way out of this room. Is this a puzzle? Is this supposed to be a puzzle? A puzzle has not that I can be found. This is a waste of space on my computer. I kid you not. The only way to find your way out of this place is to try every single solitary square to go step by step, trying over and over and over until you find the right square, only to fail straight afterwards so that you can try over and over and... Why couldn't you give us a hint? Or have the tiles you're supposed to follow ha have a slightly different color to them? Or here's a better idea. How about you let me progress without this bullcrap of a rum? And I swear to god, I could not make this up if I tried. I could not! This is the solution to the puzzle. A solution you were to guess based on nothing. design flaw at this point. This is the creator taking the everlasting piss out of you. This entire ROM hack is terrible. We really take Pokemon games for granted. We've seen so many versions of it, they make us believe it's easy to make. But if this game has shown me anything, is that you can mess it up big time. 
with balancing issues littered all over the game, the overall story being convoluted and boring, and the poor, poor, poor design choices. This is a terrible Pokemon game that I feel only exists to punish people for even considering playing the game. This is without a doubt the worst Pokemon game I have ever played and makes me appreciate official releases even more. I mean, come on. Everything branded officially by Pokemon can mean nothing shy of excellent, godlike. Not a single flaw can be you're going to make me my words, aren't you? Oh, god damn it.